Well, we just uh, moved this box blade over here to the final school to start the final laser grading on the final field. So I figured we would touch base and go ahead and finish uh, the video up on the Canamex laser control system. We, uh, we hadn't really showed you anything on it since we did the unboxing. So to start out, the laser control system has got three cables to go to it. One cable goes to your electric hydraulic valve. One cable goes to your receiver that will go up on the mast. And uh, one cable goes to the control box that goes in the cabin tractor. So to start out real quick, the cable that goes from the control box to this hydraulic valve, now it comes from Canamec with two pigtails. Instead of a single like this, it's got two of these connectors. Each one of them have two wires, so it goes into a branch, you know, and splits off into two. Actually, this piece right here, I didn't get it off of there, and that belonged to the strain relief. But since I did not get Canamex electric valve, I got this uh, Dan Foss system. I had to take that off and got rid of the, the branch in it, and then all four wires went into this valve uh, electrical connector right here. So you have a hot, a ground, and then I've got one wire that will activate the up solenoid and one wire that activates the down solenoid for the cylinder. So we walk over here to the truck. We got the other stuff right here. We'll we'll try to get this control box out and show y'all how it mounts up, hopefully one-handed. See if I can do that. I, I don't know. We'll find out. So this, of course, is the box the Canamax system comes in. I've got the other two cables right in here. One for the laser receiver and one um, for the power for the box. Let me get this out of here. So the original Canamec, uh ends for their controller, as you see right there, there's, there's two wires. So the way that was, that was a pigtail. I actually cut some of this off trying to make a little jumper wire connection when we was having trouble originally. I'll show you all about that in a minute, but there's the other terminal. So this wire right here, this cable right here, is how you get power to the control box. I uh, use a John Deere factory plug to punch into the power, you know, accessory power in the John Deere tractor. Most tractors have that. Um, the reason this looks like this is I did have it all nice and neat, but when we went to install the control box originally, the very first day, this is a control box for it, we could not get it to come on. And I called a fellow out in New Mexico that's real familiar with the Canamec system. And we couldn't figure it out. And I called the owner of Canamec. This was on Saturday. And a couple hours later, he called me back. And I really appreciate that. And I took the box apart. I was checking voltage on stuff. And I was only getting about six and a half to seven volts anywhere. And I thought we had, first I wondered if it was a step down system. It took 12 or 24 volts, stepped it down to six. And he was like, no, it's 12 volts. So I thought maybe we you know, had a bad switch or something. Come to find out, this factory plug from John Deere, you have a ground, which is the bottom, and one terminal is switched and one terminal is unswitched power. The book in my tractor, which is 5090 EM, showed and i might get these backwards but this was supposed to be the the uh right that right there was supposed to be the switch and that was unswitched so we kept popping fuses and we were popping fuses on the unswitched well we found out part of the reason was in my tractor these two terminals are backwards but after almost seven hours of diagnosing thinking that they were gonna have to overnight me a, a box from canada John Deere service manager come out and was helping us. We took this plug apart. Well, this is a different one. We took one just like it apart and realized from the factory, John Deere, or the manufacturer of it, where that bottom terminal, that bottom terminal right there is supposed to be the ground. It was not. They had the ground in one of these other terminals. Luckily, we just didn't burn up the whole damn tractor. So Saturday afternoon, he was kind enough to go back to the store, got this one, checked it. This one was wired correctly. And, you know, we quickly 
hooked it together and I have not stopped long enough to get it right. We got that correct. The controller lit up. We were in business and we've been going ever since. This cable right here goes from the controller to the receiver that goes on the mast. And it's got the spring coils in it. And the reason why it's got black tape on it is because we had a thunderstorm come in. Um, the week I was using this, I went to grab everything off and pulled the receiver off and left every, I left this cable hanging, you know, across the box plate. And because we're so far behind and everything and just, you know, just get your brain overwhelmed when it got done, I said, well, I'm just going to jump out there and, and drag the box plate around a little bit without the laser on it. Well, I made two laps and coming back, I was like, oh my God, what about the cable? Cable had just fallen down like 20 feet back and the box plate cut it in half. So luckily it did not mess up this, uh, this end. Otherwise I would have been up a, you know, what creek. So I was able to take it home, got that together, did not even have, uh, went and soldered it together, found out my solder and I are down at a buddy's house and been down there for several years, did not think about it. And uh, yeah, so I got it together anyway, so we just won't say how, so I got to fix it. So there, of course, is a receiver going to mass. But let me get these couple things and I will get these cables laid out and we will put the controller in the tractor and we'll show you all how it works, hooks up. All right, so we're in the, in the tractor right here. Now, there, this uh, module does come, you know, with a, a bracket that hooks into these thumb screws right here, and you can mount it on a bracket mount. I need to do that. I just have not took time to either make a bracket or buy a bracket. I have, you know, the holes in the B post right here. Of course, I have the spots up here. I could put a bracket up there and the drink holders in. And, there's different ways you can mount it. Um, I have just been sitting it right here. You know, it, it just it seems to work for right now. So what we have is we have the power power cable. As you see, I have that plugged in right here in the tractor. That's where I'm getting the power. Now make sure you don't hook this thing up to the unswitched power in your tractor because if you leave this thing on, and that laser setting up, I was told by somebody with experience that it will drain your battery. So power hooks up right there. See if we can hold it and try to get it to start. Hang on one second. All right, so the power goes in right here. Try to do this one handed. And then this other cable, you see, I just got cables laying here. You gotta be careful so they don't uh, get all tied up in the seat and everything else, especially when you turn around and drive backwards all day or drive around in circles. Let me get this one started. All right, so I just went ahead and hooked them up. So these uh, these connectors will only hook on, you know, the, the terminal is supposed to. They got a different amount of pins in them. And I don't remember what these connectors are called. They thread all this. Reminds me of the one we had in the military years ago. Um, there is a plug right here. Y'all can see that that is for a remote. So if you did have this box mounted, you know, up on the A pillar or something, uh, you could just use a remote or actually in a skid steer or something, you could run a remote. The remote is cabled, but you could run it in into your skid steer. So what I do is I've been doing is just just leave it right here. And I normally sit like this anyway to watch what I'm doing. So you have a on and off button. And a power mass, you can buy a power mass from Canamac that will let you do, uh, if you want to survey a field or whatever. You have your laser arrows, same thing as on your receiver. You know, it needs to go down, it's good, it needs to go up. The joystick right here, take it to the right, it'll be on manual, so then you can just up and down, and that will raise and lower your box plate, or you pull it over to your left, and that puts it in full auto mode. And then the button up here, um, is your, your sensitivity, your fine tune. I, I think it's like three millimeters, seven millimeters, 10 millimeters, 14 or something like that. It's three different settings. So, so anyway, so like I said, one cable goes to the power and that's actually the middle cable. One goes to the valve out there and one goes to the mast. So we just got to put the mast on and hook the cable up and then we can show y'all how it works. All right, so we uh, got the tractor running. We got all the cables hooked up. 
the valve cable hooked up and you can see we got the receiver up right there and it's hooked up. Now I do not have laser set up right now because I gotta go up on top of this field and do that. And uh but we'll show you roughly what it does. So as you can see, we'll turn it on and it goes to itself check. And you'll be able to see the lights light up on the on the receiver right there. If it does that. But you can see the mode right now. It's got it in manual, MNL, manual. See if y'all can see that. And then ACC, that's the sensitivity. You got two lines. That's kind of a medium. We can hit it. I don't know if we can see that. All right, that, whoops, that takes it to three. So that's the, the least sensitive. The box keeps moving on me. That would be the most sensitive. I've been running it about the middle. All right, so right now we're in manual mode. That's lit up. So what happens now, I've got a power beyond setting in my tractor. So you can use that to run hydraulic motors and stuff. So I turn the power beyond on, and then it's in my first lever here, and I pull that back to detent. So now I've got constant flow going. To manually control it then, I'll just use this joystick. I can no longer use my lever and tab. If I'm outside and I don't have this system in here, I can raise it by that lever on that bike. So I'm going to hit the button right here and we'll see it move up. That's manual. And I'm just bumping it down. So you see that's, that's running the system. So the way it works with the manual is if you say you were cutting down or didn't have a laser set up, you still want to run from the cab, you just use the manual button. As long as you have your flow on from your hydraulics. So let's close this window now. Maybe we can hear what we're doing about it. But when you go into auto mode, you have to have your laser set up and you all need to find your grade and set all that stuff up. And once it uh, has a laser within its sight, then it will take it over. So all together, I would say the Canamax system is a pretty good uh, product right there. Uh, I've been happy with it. Like I said, we had a little bit of trouble, but it was not from, you know, a fault of theirs. It was a fault of our tractor, unfortunately, and, and John Deere. But I can't say enough about um, Howard. Howard's the fellow that owns it. He's, uh, I believe Howard's from Iraq, if I remember right, and lives up in Canada. Part of the reason I had trouble understanding him to begin with. Uh, you know, because I was raising a loader bucket right there, but I actually had my arm sitting on it. Um, you know, he's got, you know, Howard lives in Canada and speaks English and still got that different accent. But but we worked it out, and, uh, you know, Howard uh, called me back that Saturday. He was having trouble, and, you know, that just speaks highly and was willing to, you know, overnight me a, a new piece because we were in such a rush. Um, that, just, that just speaks real highly. And I do appreciate them. Uh, All together, the product... Seems to work pretty good. There's a couple little minor things that I'm tuning on it once I'm learning it, and that's just something you have to do. You have to learn, you know, what you're using. Um, but I'm looking forward to maybe taking this product and putting it on skid steer as well for a, uh, like a box blade on skid steer. You know, it's a very affordable product. It's not, you know, if you buy like a level best system or whatever, no, that's going to be getting the, the attachment too, but you won't spend $30,000, you know, with a tremble setup or, or whatever. You got Earthworks Go. I honestly was going to look at Earthworks Go originally. Uh, I reached out to Site Tech and after calling in four times and never could get a price they said they were sending. I just went another direction, but I didn't have time to wait no more. So, um, I would say if you need a laser control system for laser grading, reach out to Canamac. They've got full GPS systems too. Um, I am in need of another laser, actually, so I think I'm probably going to uh, reach out and, and buy one from them. They are a distributor for a German-made laser that's supposed to be pretty good. So, all together, um, you know, if you need one, it might be an option for you. And we'll try to get a little video of this thing in action, maybe, uh, for, for another video and, uh, and show you what it does in real life.